dear Professor Aloni and uh, dear friends, um, I won't take uh, a whole lot of your time. Uh, I'm here to to express certain concerns that all of us share. And Professor Aloni has mentioned very significant constitutional and legal issues involved in the new admission policy that the university is uh, putting forward before us. One major uh, thing that we, we find in, in the whole process of scuttling seats, the UGC norms being implemented, etc., is the notion that uh, the university is is some kind of an infrastructure. The people within that, whether students or teachers or the karmacharis and others, they do not matter. Now you know the hostel problem is solved forever because there will be no more intake. Uh, no building, no classroom issues. Uh, so there is a one step solution to every problem in the university. All infrastructural problems are resolved. Then what is your problem then? That's what the administration is asking. No, everything is resolved. Now, again, you are going into all these kinds of strife. Because that human element within it is what they refuse to understand. And that's precisely why we have to talk about that. What is this element? They've been trying to keep different sections of society from entering institutions like JNU for a long period of time. There has been consistent struggles over a long period of time for more inclusivity, making this institution a step further. And different kinds of struggles, reaching up to the NAFE committee report, all these questions about the Viva Vosi and other things, was the latest, uh, you know, uh, phase of that, that long struggle. And when we were going along those lines, now you have a situation where you have to start from zero. Every process is scuttled. The whole institutional memory is erased. The whole process of inclusivity is, is erased. If you don't take students, then where is the question of, of social justice? Where is the question of students? own ability to think and research, etc. The changes in the uh, written test pa pattern that you might have seen, what is it for? The OMR kind of mechanism. Who asked for it? <coughs> they say UGC regulation. UGC regulation states that it should be like this. That is their interpretation, yes. They, they mention certain things along those lines. But why should we do that? If we can have better positions on academic matters. A university, as Professor Alone has clearly mentioned, established according to an act of the parliament, had its own provisions which to the maximum point of time should not conflict with UGC's own provisions. But whenever there is a conflict that emerges, whether this is a proper conflict or not is another legal quiz. But whenever such a conflict emerges, university administration should be doing its best to defend its conventions and practices and the way it is moving forward so that there is more inclusivity and more constitutional principles being brought in so that our vistas of knowledge 
inclusivity, etc., are expanded. Instead of that defense, what you are having is a clear-cut sabotage of an institutional process per se. And wherever you have such a kind of bend of mind of destroying the very basis of the institutional structure, that student community and teachers and the karmacharis over a period of time build, it's an affront on the very process of education that we have you know, evolved out of constant struggles in our midst. And it is such struggles that the administration do not you know, like at all, as we know. And no administration likes struggles, as we know. But at least they will find a means to, to bring in some order. Here, as you have said, it is left to a kind of chaotic situation to, to, to evolve. Why? Because they would think at the end of this process, the destruction can be completed. Uh, and what we are doing by blocking this whole new admission policy is to, to say no to this process of destruction of the institution. As human beings residing in this kind of an ecosystem for the time being, we do not want our ecosystem totally be destroyed so that it's the end of us. We don't want to end our intellectual life here like that. We want it to be a vibrant place where people from different backgrounds, different parts of India, from different castes, different religions, etc., should come and contribute to this place in, in the best possible manner that they can. That's a place we all want to live in. And when we speak that kind of a language, this is precisely a threat that is being perceived by, by the powers that be. Why is it a threat? One, the most important thing is that because JNU over a period of time have developed social science and humanities as, as an important uh, and a central element of its, its curriculum and its uh, intellectual activity. It has a culture of organizing, it has a principle of debating a variety of issues and therefore manageability, that kind of, of ordering the institution the way the powers that be wants it to be run, that is not possible with an institution like Jain. There are always very diverse views. And that is part and parcel of a university life. But for, for them, this is precisely what is, what is a threat. And therefore, what is being done now, and I'm not worried about numbers and, 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 and the processes that are going on among different uh, you know, groups of students and, and teachers, etc. Beyond all the, those kinds of differences, and those differences would be part and parcel of this kind of a process because we have very different approaches to, for resolving certain problems. But beyond all that, what, what makes us think about the future of the university is our own imagination about the university. And there, there are two kinds of principles which are maybe seemingly contradictory. One is the autonomy of the university. And the other one is the university's own connections with society, which is not too autonomous from the society in which it is formed. The autonomy of the university from the state is a significant element. The connectivity of the university with society is another very significant element. We cannot lose sight of both of these aspects. The autonomy of the university from the government 
is for debating and discussing things within the university setup which otherwise may not be able to be aired in public places in uh, other kinds of contexts because this is a place where everything could be discussed which need not go along with public morality with uh, questions of of general kind of perception of things it is possible within a university space that is within the purview of an intellectual debate an academic debate and so on and so forth and that autonomy is again institutionalized through the academic councils through the provisions that we got from the, the parliament's own act and innumerable mechanisms of the student bodies to the SFCs to a variety of means so that that autonomy goes down to <coughs> the units of the centers to a variety of uh, you know levels from hostel life to everywhere so that at least in those domains of our life here can be you know enriched by our own uh, you know contributions towards that and so that that is not curtailed by any overarching authority sitting in some building or the other and if that process is what we think as part and parcel of that autonomy of the university with respect to the state this involves a greater level of not imposing administratively or politically certain kind of measures which curtails all our possibilities of not only expressing views but also conducting matters through these institutional processes wherein we exercise that autonomy the curtailment of uh, the academic council's own functions from the manipulation of minutes to the the pushing in of the ugc regulation in that particular meeting all those processes have to be seen as an attempt by the university administration to see that we do not exercise our academic autonomy properly here because you are not autonomous that's what they say you are our subjects we will determine what you should be and you behave and the new administration's uh, letter that is notice or whatever that is uh, place this is again pointing towards that you be but uh, how can one behave like that in a democratic you know imagination of a university and in a country where there is a constitution where there are processes we cannot be subjects of somebody else we are autonomous individuals human beings residing here with all rights and our connection with the rest of the society the second part that i was talking about there are people waiting there to come in to have education they have a right to education and you cannot deny them the right to education the students and the teachers and the university community cannot keep aloof from what's happening in society the rights violations to all kinds of things we have to be somewhere in dialogue with people at all those levels if that is the case then you know our responsibility sitting here in jnu is is to link these two matters together and and place before the administration and the government that we will not become subject of your rule 
rather we will be self-determinant citizens who will assert the constitutional rights and the provisions that we have and we will assert our humanity in our dignity so that no administrative and political order can determine our fate. And therefore, what we do today is a deeply political question in that sense. A political question which needs to address constitutional morality and values in a democracy in a positive direction. A political matter in the sense that how the society at large and the university as an institution is connected, how the power hierarchies, the caste systems, the, the, the deprivations of all kinds, and how a university like this could, could address that question. Within its limited purview of institutional access to people, if we cannot, as educated people here, ensure that that is guaranteed, then who else is going to guarantee them those kinds of things? This is a fundamental kind of political question that we have to ask ourselves. If nobody can come. So if this is the percentage of reduction in seats, you can imagine over the next five years, what will happen? What will be the number of students in, in JNU? Yeah, there will be lots of vacant hostels. No, no doubt about it. There, there are many places. One way of utilizing that space, obviously, will be to start, and I'm, I'm not joking at all, and this is the most important thing that will come up, is to have these Kaushal Kendras. <laughs> Certificate and diploma courses in, from all kinds of trades. And if you're lucky, if there is photography and other things, <laughs> but uh, the, the pool is very, very clear, but it can expand. This higher education, that higher is something that, that irks them. It should be, it will be, these diplomas, etc., will be termed as higher education because that's after maybe a basic degree or something. We don't know, whatever it is. But uh, thinking such uh, low levels in, 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 in the sphere of higher education. Higher means trouble. Research means trouble. JNU means trouble and, and things of that sort. And a society which cannot understand, a state which cannot understand that this is a diverse society, the <laughs> people will really make noise. And that is why there are new processes at work, institutions at work. If you can't manage it, change those institutions. So our demand now is your administrative imposition of the UGC regulation. Change that regulation if you can't find an, another way. But it's not. Mostly if you assert your own parliamentary kind of dicta mandate and assert the university's autonomy with respect to uh, the UGC provisions. Some of these issues can be, some of these issues can be really sorted out. But that requires a will to sustain this university, to take it forward. The will here is to make a subject and do whatever they want to do with it with all these new vacant spaces coming up, the infrastructure being fantastic and things of that sort. So we will not buy that infrastructural logic. We will stick on to our citizenship and humanity. <coughs> and we should move forward by asserting that principle. Thank you very much.